This example comes out of section 5.3, the tangent function. Uh, all the way from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. We haven't graphed tangent functions in previous lessons. It's all been limited to sinusoidal, sine and cosine graphs. So this one is a little bit different. If you put the sine graph in calculator, it does a decent job if your windows are okay. Basically, since we know y equals 10x is the same thing as sine divided by cosine, wherever sine is zero, we have a zero on this graph. So that is at zero, 180 degrees, 360 degrees, negative 180, negative 360, and it would be every 180 degrees beyond that. But since it is sine divided by cosine, where cosine is zero, we have something else. And what we have is actually vertical asymptotes on this graph. Asymptotes, remember, are basically imaginary lines that your graph approaches closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. And so uh, if I label these x equals 90 degrees, x equals negative 90 degrees, x equals 270 degrees, and x equals negative 270 degrees, and you'd see again that they are 180 degrees apart, and they would keep, you'd have more and more and more if you kept going further and further to 450, negative 450, etc. In between, your graph does something like this. And that's one full cycle of a tangent graph right there. It turns out its period is only 180 degrees, and so that's all we would need to say, okay, now repeat that. So you have the same thing in here, uh, the same thing over here to the left, and we have a piece of that here and a piece of it here since we were only asked to go to positive and negative 360 as our limiting factors. The tangent graph has no amplitude uh, if we're asked to describe it because of the fact that it has no max and min. It goes infinitely high and low, so you can't say max minus min over 2. It does have a period. Its period is 180 degrees, as I mentioned a second ago, half as big as the period of sine or cosine. Now, if I talk about its domain and range, the domain is a little bit complicated. The range is not complicated at all, so I'll start there. Y is an element of all real numbers. Y can be anything uh, on this graph. It goes, like I said, as high and as low as you want it to. The domain, though, is a little bit trickier because the domain is everything in between all these asymptotes. So you have certain values that x can't be. x can't be 90, for example, but it can't be negative 90. It can't be 270, negative 270, etc. So from here, if you have 90, it's every 180 degrees after that. So 90 plus 180n, where n is any integer, would be your best, fastest way of writing down the domain. For zeros, kind of similar in that you have a zero at the origin, zero, zero, and then every 180 degrees after that. So you could say x equals 180 degrees times n, where n is an integer, and that would list all of your zeros on this graph. Um, this one, because it's an intro example, I did it in degrees, but basically in radians things would look identical other than the fact that you'd be labeling things in terms of pi, you know, 2 pi. Uh, we would have asymptotes at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, if you did it on your calculator your window settings would have to change fairly significantly, but once you did that you'd realize that you've graphed the same thing. Uh, your period would be pi radians, still no amplitude. Uh, the range is still all real numbers, but your domain is going to be x, where x can't equal pi over 2, uh, and then every pi from there. So that would be the equivalent domain. And your zeros, in a way, easier to write because it's every multiple of pi. So pi times n, where n is any integer, would be your zeros on a tangent graph, graphed in radians.